to welcome all of our communities across the region this morning to our meeting. We will be uh, beginning with introductions. And um, if we have time, we will move to a round table at the end of the meeting. We have been had Nancy Robbins as a moderator for our last year event. She is so fantastic. We asked her to help us out again. Thank you to Nancy uh, to be willing to do this for us. And I am going to turn it over to you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Nancy Robbins. I'm the general manager of Community Futures West Shallowhead. We're a business support organization and we work in Jasper, Hinton, Edson, Grand Cache and Yellowhead County. And I'm very happy to be moderating this session this morning with our mayors from the West Shallowhead. Uh, we will begin with some uh, introductions um, and I will go to Mayor Glinsky first to introduce himself. And then um, I guess yeah, just a simple wave, Mayor Glinsky is here. We have uh, Mayor Ireland from the Municipality of Jasper, uh, Mayor Zahara from the Town of Edson and Mayor Michaels from the Town of Hinton. And I'd also like for uh, Mayor Zahard to introduce our special guest that is new joining us this morning. All right, so uh, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us. And uh, I would like to welcome our brand new CAO uh, to the town of Edson. She hasn't officially started yet. Uh, she's gonna be starting here on June 1st. Uh, Christine Beaveridge. Uh, Christine, do you wanna just maybe give a little bit of information about yourself and? Uh, about uh, your vision for the community. Lee, thank you, uh, Mayor Zahara. So I'm pleased to be here today to um, be introduced to the regional leaders. Um, it's very exciting to be joining this region. Um, coming from you know, a long history of, of municipal government, um, I look forward to working with a group that uh, is so progressive in, in working hard for the region. Um, I, you know, I don't have a lot to say you know, as far as um, what I'm looking forward to um, in, in, you know, relocating my family to a, an area that is so beautiful. Um, we're very excited to, to join. So um, that's all I have to, to say. Well, Christine, welcome. And we look forward to having you in the West Shallowhead. And I look forward to working with you in the future. It's going to be great to have you on board. So this morning, I just want to talk a little Excuse bit. Excuse me, Nancy. Yes. If I just may, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know we were going to do the introductions then, but I would like to also introduce at this time our new CAO. Oh, Mr. forgive Luke me, Wirke. of course, Mayor Glinsky. And, uh, he has come to us uh, on April 1st. Uh, I think we were very fortunate uh, that Luke comes with a wealth of experience uh, moving up here, for, or moving up down here, I guess, from Bonneville. And I'd like to introduce uh, Luke. We look forward to working for with him and uh, with all of you. Uh, you know, I think we're very unique right now because we're all have new CAOs within the last few months. And it's going to be a really new, exciting time for all of us. But uh, Luke Mercy. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Mary Glinsby, for the introduction. And I think I've met uh, many of you at the last meeting last month. I, I'm very excited, as I said earlier, to, to be here and uh, my first five or six weeks with Yellowhead County in the region has been tremendous. My house is going to be mine next Friday in Edson. So very excited. So look forward to working with you all. Welcome Luke. And it's great to have you on the team in the West Yellowhead. Look forward to working with you as well. So this morning we're gonna take questions. Uh, we ask that your requests remain respectful and that they be typed in the chat box. And as they come up, I will try to address as many of them as possible. But first we're gonna to go to our mayors uh, to do a, a simple, quick two minute introduction on what's happening in each of their communities. And um, I will start with uh, Mayor Glinsky. Thank you, Nancy. And good morning to, again, to all the people that are listening in. You know, these are exciting times for uh, Yellowhead County. Even though we're all dealing with uh, COVID-19 and it's affected many businesses in the area, uh, there's still exciting things going on. Uh, you know, just recently we've had uh, uh, meetings with Cascade Power uh, Company and the Canyon Creek uh, hydropower projects that are being built uh, 
the one just outside Edson, the other one just outside of Hinton. These projects are going ahead after years of uh, paperwork and it's exciting because they're bringing jobs to the communities uh, all around us and uh, it, it's so good to see. But I, I'm also excited because the energy sector has also continued to strive throughout the COVID uh, period and we've seen uh, significant uh, work being done throughout the Yellowhead County area. Just the other day, I took a drive up Swanson Lumber Road and surprised to come across two drilling rigs in full operation, uh, just miles outside of Edson. So that's great to see. And uh, in talking with our uh, MLA Martin Long the other day, you know, we, uh, we totaled up 52 rigs working in our region. So that's been great. It's driving the economies in Hinton and Edson and Yellowhead. Uh, it's bringing uh, coin into the pockets of the businesses that are, have been able to stay over due to COVID. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm excited because our staff here in Yellowhead County uh, have taken some great initiatives. We're looking at our land use uh, bylaw to make it easier for home-based businesses and other types of businesses to uh, work and prosper within Yellowhead County. We reduced the tax base by 5% for businesses and for uh, residential people. So we have some very exciting times coming ahead over the next few years. And I'm excited because Luke has a, I think he's very open-minded and he has, he has a future aspect that he sees. And, and I see that future with all of us working together. I think we can make Yellowhead this whole region an adventure for people to come into and visit. Uh, you know, with our cycling tracks within the communities, uh, I mean, we're already talking, uh, working together to develop these, and I think that has a great future. But last night, I just want to end. Last night, we had a town hall with the Premier, Dr. Henshaw, and uh, we talked about COVID-19, what the effects were going to be on the province, what the government was going to do to change. And I think we all know that we need to open up our uh, economy in Alberta. Businesses are hurting, lots of companies are, are, are failing and, and may not reopen. But the one thing that Dr. Henshaw said, and the Premier asked us as mayors, and I guess I'm going to pull that away from you other three because I was the first one on the agenda, but I think it's in all of our minds, is that we're going to ask you, the business leaders within our community, to talk to your families, your friends, your neighbours, your co-workers, and encourage people to get vaccinated. Yes, there is a percentage out there that don't want to do it, but there's a large percentage that want to get through COVID-19. And Dr. Henshaw emphasized yesterday the importance of getting vaccinated, that that will not necessarily end COVID-19, but it will enable our province to reboot and get things going and get us back together, doing things together, like we did in the past. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Glinski. And we'll head over to uh, Mayor Ireland in the municipality of Jasper. Uh, thank you, Nancy. I, I wanna begin by thanking both uh, you and Community Futures West Yellowhead and Louise and the Business Support Network for giving us again, uh, this opportunity to connect with our residents and in particular our our business sector and our respective communities. It's, it's really important. Uh, I want to, of course, thank uh, my regional colleagues, um, Mayor Zaglinski, Michaels, and Zahara. Uh, I think it's important that we, we do work together as we have been and, and demonstrate that uh, within our communities that we are taking a regional approach. And then most importantly, I, I want to send sincere thanks to all of those people who have joined us online and are going to participate, but also those who, for various reasons, aren't able to, to join in the, the live online session, but they're going to watch this. It's being recorded, and others will, will take advantage of this opportunity later, and uh, I, I want to thank them as well uh, for, for their engagement. This is um, the second iteration of our collective listening effort, and one of the things we've learned is, again, the, the reinforcement of the importance of listening. It's hard to believe that um, May 4th of last year, uh, we were only six weeks into a global pandemic. We had a session like this. We are anticipating a relaunch 
in three weeks. And here we are um, now 14 months into a pandemic um, and we are still learning. But one of the things I say is we have learned is, is the importance of listening. Um, you know, in that last um, 18 months or, or 14 months, I should say, um, you know, we, we went into this knowing um, and hearing the expression that it was more like a marathon than a sprint. But even then, it gave us no realistic expectation of what was coming. But we've been through it, and we've been through it together, as we said from the outset. Um, that was our goal, to, to get through this together. And um, we have been through so much together. Um, and if nothing else, that has shown us, I think, the imperative of collaborative action. Together, we've traveled this uh, enormous unknown terrain. And I will acknowledge that there's been a few missteps uh, along the way. There's been a few cases of two steps forward and one step back, but really importantly, collectively, we have made progress. Um, in some cases, really significant process. And Jim mentioned uh, the absolute importance of vaccinations. I, I could not agree more. We all have a part to play. Um, and one role that we can all play is getting the vaccine as soon as we're able. So I, I fully endorse those comments from, from Mayor Aglinski. I think at, at this point, I'm quite eager to, to hear again from our business community in particular, uh, but I will say that our path to recovery and beyond is becoming, I think, more clear and more attainable um, as we move forward. But it still remains a path that we must follow together. And I'm, I'm glad that we have this regional support. I'm glad that we have business support in our communities. And I think Together, we can indeed continue to both shorten and secure that emerging path to recovery and beyond. And this is one step in that process. So I, I welcome the continuing dialogue. And uh, Nancy, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you very much. Mayor Michaels, we'll head over to you next. Uh, thanks, Nancy. I do want to give a, a huge thank you to Louise, yourself. Uh, the town of Edson for doing, uh, you know, uh, the communications of this uh, and everyone listening. And really, the word listening is the key thing here. Uh, sure, today maybe we'll bring some insight on certain questions, but it's also to connect with you to hear uh, what you're thinking and what is still missing. Because uh, as we leave here today, decisions and conversations happen. So that's the most important thing. These are extremely challenging times. And as Mayor Ireland said a year ago, we did this for COVID. Now, uh, Louise is like, okay, we, we need to do this every year. Mayors in this area need to collaborate as our administrations, uh, you know, need to collaborate. But yet we're still in COVID. So we're trying to balance helping every business in our community survive and getting back to whatever these normal times will be when that happens. And then focus on the challenges businesses have outside of COVID and they are still there. So from a town of Hinton perspective, sometimes the small things make a difference. As you're well aware, our communities um, responded to patios. That is the essential uh, purpose of municipalities is listening and reacting. And uh, it's a negative way of saying it, but getting out of the way of what entrepreneurs and businesses need in, in order to succeed. And the patio project is a small example that I hope continues with all of our communities. Um, working with Community Futures West Yellowhead, I know Nancy is an amazing moderator, but she's also amazing at what she does. And she serves all of our communities immensely. Uh, and the word and, and her staff are unreal. So it's, it's working with these partners in our communities that are going to help us get to the normal point. Now, the big issues or the bigger things in uh, the town of Hinton, as you've probably heard, is like the golf course. Uh, that's one thing. Tourism is, is, is another issue. Uh, we had a presentation from um, the DMO. Now, Hinton as a whole, we've been talking about this for a decade, is how do we have a DMO? How do we really get to the next level with tourism? Again, using our experience and using sort of the better relationship perspective 
uh, with these smaller things, we have to make sure that we strike and we move forward with moving tourism. Um, uh, we have a tax incentive program uh, and, and this is the collaboration. Mayor Zahir and their council passed a tax incentive bylaw about six months ago. Uh, seeing that right away, the town of Hinton jumped on that. that. That's something we have to do to entice the area, not just Hinton. We cannot compete with Edson. We cannot compete with Jasper. I cannot compete with West Yellowhead, but together we can compete with the rest of the world to make this area better. A tax incentive program is one step uh, in the right direction. Uh, having access to land for major companies to come in. I see Edson and Cascade is, is great to have there. Now, how could we have those things around uh, Hinton? Well, as I said, tax incentive is the first step. Another step is having that land available. So those are the things uh, here in Hinton from a high level perspective while maintaining the relationships and collaboration on the smaller things in order to get businesses in a good place in 2022. Uh, so it's still going to be a rough 2021. Um, but in a nutshell, that's where we are. And I'll end there because I'm pretty sure I used over two minutes, Louise. Thank you, uh, Mayor Michaels. And we'll head over to Edson to Mayor Zahara. Uh, thank you so much, Nancy. And thanks everyone for taking the time to be here today. Um, I don't want to rehash uh, the things that, uh, that my other colleagues have said here. Uh, but uh, I think one of the key messages that um, uh, Mayor Glinsky said, I think is really, really important is encouraging our communities to get vaccinated. Uh, we've been talking about the end of, end of the tunnel is near, the end of the tunnel is near, while well, it actually is very near. We just have to get through this next uh, number of weeks and have people adhering to uh, what is uh, what the public health protocols are. Um, it's been extremely difficult the last 13 months and we can armchair quarterback and look back at the decisions made, but uh, we, we also have to look forward and, and, and try to get through this uh, final hump. And uh, uh, with over 37%, I believe, of Albertans now receiving their first dose, we are well on our way. And uh, Dr. Hinshaw and uh, Minister Chandra and the Premier announced yesterday that uh, uh, municipalities will start getting information on how vaccination uptakes are in their communities on Monday. So I am issuing a challenge to my other mayors. Uh, let's have a little bit of a regional competition and see which community comes out on top. And uh, we'll have to figure out uh, what the wager is going to be. But uh, uh, this is going to be key to uh, getting back to normal. And, and I, I know how difficult it has been for so many business owners, especially gyms and restaurants how, who have been more adversely affected than others uh, during this pandemic. Um, for our council, we've tried really hard to uh, provide programs um, to, to assist uh, businesses. We did a 5% uh, budget uh, rollback, or sorry, a 10% uh, budget rollback last year, which led to a 5% tax reduction. Uh, we are subsidizing taxes for the next five years to ensure we have normal levels of service without overburdening our taxpayers. We also have, uh, like Mayor Michaels announced, uh, a, a non-incentive tax bylaw to encourage development in our communities. Uh, and, and one of the great things about that is that immediately uh, allowed uh, the Phoenix Business Park and Edson Chrysler Development go, uh, to go forward in our community. That project probably wouldn't have started so quickly if it wasn't for that, uh, that piece of uh, legislation being brought forward. Uh, we also have the loan program through West Yellowhead Community Futures that businesses can uh, apply to. Maybe Nancy can speak a little bit to that, as well as we've hired a business liaison, Heather Cokes, who's there to support our local businesses in Edson to help navigate some of the programs that are being offered by the federal and provincial governments. Uh, as municipalities, we only have a small amount of levers to pull to, to support uh, businesses within our role. Uh, and limited financial cap capabilities, but uh, there's so many grants and so many opportunities out there through the provincial and federal governments uh, that we felt it was really necessary to provide that support uh, uh, to, to access those resources for businesses that may be struggling to uh, figure all these things out because there's just so much information out there. Um, as I wrap up, um, I do want to say that things are looking positive. Um, uh, Edson's in a unique position. We've been benefiting from the TMX pipeline, uh, as well as Cascade starting up now. Uh, we've seen a consistent growth in development permits since 2019. Uh, last year, we had 23 uh, development permits in the first quarter. This year, we're at 33. Uh, we had a number of new businesses start up during the pandemic. Uh, places like the Chop Leaf, Pop Cork, uh, Colleen's Biker Barn, uh, Fresh Vine. 
um, all of these starting up at a time when things are uh, immensely difficult and uh, they're still continuing to move forward. So I think the future is bright. I'm really happy of the, uh, the collaboration that we've been doing as communities uh, to, to work together to, to support our region and uh, working with West Yellow Community Futures as well. So uh, I look forward to the questions and hearing any thoughts and, and ways that the municipalities can, can support our local businesses moving forward. Thank you. Thank you from Edson. While we're waiting for some uh, questions to come in, I want to briefly talk about the current restrictions because for the first time ever in the West Shallow Ahead, we have different restrictions in different communities. And so um, we are seeing now that our high cases are in Yellowhead County, uh, Edson and Hinton. And uh, we have lower cases in Jasper. And as a result, there are differing restrictions in um, Jasper than there are in the rest of the region. And so we're asking our businesses to please make sure that you understand the measures that are applicable to your community and to understand why a hair salon in one community may be open, but not in another. And I understand that it's very frustrating. So if you need some help in understanding uh, restrictions or need some help just navigating what you need to do over the next three weeks if your business is closed, please reach out to Community Futures. I'll ask Louise to put our office phone number in the chat and then uh, just reach out. We have uh, coaches in all our communities in Jasper, Hinton, Edson um, that are able to, and Grand Cash that are able to help you out. And we ask that we reach out to both your municipalities and to uh, your um sorry, I'm trying to pay attention to the chat at the same time and to your community futures office and we can answer some questions for you. So we have our first question this morning. It's about our attraction for businesses and how do we encourage and attract more industry and business to our area? And that question came from Hinton. So I will turn it over to Mayor Michaels. Thanks, Nancy. <clears throat> A great question. And uh, in, in the intro, I, I alluded to that having a tax incentive program, as Kevin or Mayor, Mayor Zahara alluded to, uh, plays a role in certain companies uh, incentivizing or, or choosing our location over others. But the other next step, at least for our community, uh, in, uh, I, I looked at uh, our neighboring communities from the last 30, 40 years. Why has certain areas succeeded in, in, in uh, attracting businesses? Well, um, this, this word sometimes it came with uh, some, some positive and some negative, but in Avista, the concept of having land ready, those were tied to, incent, uh, to uh, uh, environmental uh, standards you have to use. But, uh, I'm sorry, Jim was just there for a second and threw me off. Uh, we, we need to be able to have this land turnkey ready. Uh, why would a business choose to come uh, to one community, let's say Hinton, uh, over anywhere else in the world. Yet, if we don't have any land available, we don't have a, in, uh, a tax incentive program that's extremely competitive, they're simply not going to choose us. So uh, having that first step in place it plays a major role in this. But the other one is we need X amount of acres of land ready, uh, serviced uh, for uh, companies to just uh, a start up shop. Otherwise, they'll just go uh, elsewhere. So that's uh, the important second step that we have to accomplish as a council uh, here in Hinton. And I'll turn it over to Mayor Zahara. Would you like to answer that question about attraction? Sure, that's a, that's a great question. And I, I, I echo what Mayor Michaels uh, said. Um, the tax incentive bylaw for us was a key piece. Um, and, and the thing with the tax incentive bylaw is just not for new business, it's for existing businesses to redevelop. So if they want to, you know, uh, do a big renovation and upgrade their property, um, they can go through that program and really incentivize um, getting that kind of development going. Um, and I think uh, another key point um, is our land use bylaw and uh, some of the uh, procedures and uh, some of the things that businesses and developers need to do. It has to be simple, easy, uh, reducing red tape. That's been a focus of our council administration uh, over the last number of years, we are uh, looking at doing a re, uh, reworking of our land use bylaw, and we're going to be looking towards uh, Hinton, for example, 
on what they've done because they have a, a really good, uh, what we've seen uh, at first glance, a really good land use bylaw and trying to simplify things and make it easier for people to do business in our community, um, as well as working uh, regionally and collaboratively with our, our partners on things such as economic development. Mary Glinsky spoke about uh, the bike parks. Um, this is something that is uh, a key feature in our communities and can really help spur some uh, economic development and tourism. Um, and as well as um, just getting our names out there when we're, when we're talking uh, with uh, industry and businesses, there's a lot of work that we can do. Um, we've been fortunate in our region, I think, over the years because industry has really driven, oil and gas has really driven things, but now municipalities have to take a bigger role uh, in, in seizing on those opportunities and attracting those businesses uh, to our communities. Attraction is very different in the county and in Jasper for various reasons be, than it is in Hinton and Edson. So would uh, Mayor Ireland or Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Glinsky like to uh, join the conversation on that issue and just talk about why attraction is so important to your regions, your communities as well? Mayor Glinsky, I'm going to get you to turn off your mute, please. Oh. There you go. Go ahead, sir. Okay, I think this was a very important question uh, that came out. And even though it came out of Hinton, it's important to all of us. You know, I was just visualizing to some of my staff members here today, I look at Yellowhead as a gateway. And we can call it a gateway to whatever you want, a gateway to adventure. Let's just pick that term. But we need to promote that to the people. And maybe we promote it by way of signage coming into the Yellowhead once you cross the Pemina River, start talking about what our communities have to offer, what Yellowhead has to offer in campgrounds, in pump track, in cycling areas, in historic uh, gold mining communities, uh, the dunes, the uh, rock formations out by uh, the Athabasca River there. There's so much here, but we need to educate people and businesses of what's here and we can't do that by just sitting at home. We need to go out and promote that, whether it's at trade shows or business shows, uh, when they open up after COVID-19, of course, but we need to promote it. We need to promote it together with the four communities. Mayor Michaels mentioned getting land available so that they can expand. I've always visioned for many, many years when I look, when I drive from Hinton to Jasper Park, there's another Kanaskis sitting there. We need to work with our provincial leaders, our federal government, our partners here, together to open up some of that land as uh, Mayor as Michael said. There, there are great opportunities here. You know, with the tech mine closing, Coal Valley closing, eventually that railroad's probably going to leave after tech does the reclamation. What a beautiful cycling track from Edson right through to the mountains. We have so many opportunities. We need to work together to pull it all together. And the other thing we have going for us, and we have to make sure people understand we have great education facilities at all of our communities. We have one of the newest hospitals in, in Alberta. We have a great hospital facility in Hinton. We have to brag and show this to the industry out there that this might be the place to come and expand their future operations and encourage people to come and visit. Thank you. Mayor Ireland. Well, thank you, Nancy, and, and thank you for um, already leading me into the distinction <laughs> between uh, Jasper and our, our regional neighbors. So attraction from our perspective is focused on attracting people um, not industry. One of the, the effects of COVID in particular is uh, a renewed awareness within our community that we are all dependent on tourism. We're not going to attract new industry. We might attract new players in the tourism industry, but we're not in, in the process of, of attracting new industry. But people are what make our economy flow and we've, we've really felt the, the lack of visitation. Um, I, it, 
I find it really interesting listening to the other mayors and I, I appreciate um, the, the concerns that they have uh, earlier in his remarks. Um, Mayor Zahara mentioned that municipalities don't necessarily have a lot of levers and I, and I understand that. But in terms of um, economic development, I can tell you that Jasper has far fewer levers um, than my, my colleagues. Uh, we have a set land base. Um, so I, I hear Mayor Michaels talking about having um, pre-service land available um, for developers and for industry. That's not something um, that we can manage in Jasper. We don't have control over land use planning and development. We're struggling now to find land simply for residents, not for industry. Uh, but I absolutely recognize the need to have uh, pre-service land. It, it, if we're going to attract somebody to, to build housing, it can be done more easily if we service the land in advance. And so I, I fully understand what, what uh, my colleagues are saying in that regard. But I also understand the growing role of the interdependence of the region. If we can assist our regional neighbors in development matters, that's more people in the region, that's more people who are going to come and visit us in Jasper. And we need that, quite frankly. Um, we need visitation and it has been a regional market that has sustained us for the last couple of years. So to the extent that we can help our, our neighbors um, find opportunities for development, um, we're engaged in that and will continue to be because it will benefit Jasper in the long run. Jim, Jim is right. Um, you get, you get people visiting the county or Edson or Hinton, uh, chances are high that they'll come and pay a visit to Jasper as well. Uh, so we can work together and I'm excited at the prospects of that. Thanks, Nancy. Thank you. So with this conversation of business attraction, we did get a comment uh, in the chat about how do we attract reputable businesses that value our community and are committing to upholding good operating practices such as paying vendors in time and in full. And it is something to consider as we uh, look at attraction. We, we need to, as the person made in the comment, that we need to ensure that people are engaged in our community. But I'm going to use uh, Mayor uh, Ireland's uh, comment uh, to segue into the next comment that talks about um, tourism. And it's uh, the question is, tourism is something that we could benefit from working regionally. Is this something our mayors are discussing in the region to work collaboratively? And would anyone like to comment on that? I, I, I can okay. start, Nancy, if that's all right. Yeah. Uh, I, I know Mayor Glinsky, Mayor Zahir, myself quickly had a conversation about what, what are some of the tourism opportunities that transcend uh, all three areas and snowmobiling, ATVs, uh, our trail systems are all interconnected. That's something that we've started. Uh, it's optimistic with all of us having new CA CAOs. Uh, it's about communicating and making them work together. And that's already started with um, Jasper CAO, uh, Mr. Given, uh, ours, Emily Olson, and now with Luke and Christine at the table, that's the opportunity that we have that uh, the culture that I believe all four mayors believe in is working together, uh, helping one another. Uh, and our four CAOs, I think, are uh, working towards that. Nothing tangible right, right now, but we do have that area, as Mr. Uh, Mayor Glinsky alluded to. Uh, and our trail systems are unreal. Uh, and, and as I said, sn uh, snowmobiling and ATVs is another great opportunity to really brand our area that has not been touched. People who are really extremely in those uh, uh, niches know where to go, but that's about it. It's really challenging for people to really say, hey, Hinton, Edson, Yellowhead County, Jasper, that, that's an area where we can go snowmobiling. It, it's, it's, it's not organized yet. So there's an extremely great opportunity and uh, with our, our, our four new CAOs, uh, that's a challenge I, I believe that they're ready to have. Would any of the three other mayors like to comment or will we go on to the next question? Uh, Mayor Ireland? Thanks, Nancy. Uh, 
there is groundwork being laid for a greater degree of regional tourism collaboration. Uh, I know that uh, Mayor Michaels uh, spoke earlier um, about a, a session held in Hinton about creating a, a DMO, and I, I think he was assisted in that by um, the CAO of Tourism Jasper. Um, so there's there's collaboration ongoing at that level, and I know that locally one of the things we did in response to the pandemic uh, a little over a year ago was establish um, an economic recovery task force and in the context of that and I'm not in a position to to preempt the recommendations that are uh, going to come from that group um, within a few weeks I think but I can say that there has been discussion at, at that working group or task force level of the need for a crafted a regional destination um, strategy. That is uh, the region working together to figure out how we can best leverage our, our absolutely fantastic location to attract uh, more of Canada and more of the world to this region. I know that we have locals who are quite happy to travel to the Nordic Center um, I say Hinton, but I probably should say in the county. But uh, you know, there are opportunities for for expanding those sorts of opportunities that aren't necessarily available in the national park, but they are available regionally. And we recognize that a a, a regional um, approach to uh, defining and marketing the destination is going to be in our collective benefit. So uh, work is progressing. Uh, these things start with strategies and then you develop down from there to, to come up with, with plans. Um, and so it'll take some time, but we have the, absolutely, we have the product available in this part of the world um, to attract the rest of the world to us. So. I think we will continue to work together. It's It's been something that has been highlighted throughout the past year. And I think the, the need is confirmed. Mayor Glinski. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, you know, I agree with what has been said here. And I just want to bring an example of us working together. And I, I think if you look at the new Bighorn uh, Mountain Trail that's starting up by uh, Hinton, you know, that's been a collaboration between the county, Hinton, business community of uh, Hinton and stuff like that. And I think that it has a great future aspect for the areas. And as Mayor Ireland said, working together, we can develop a lot. They're restricted in the national parks on the land base that they could use within that community. But that park ends at our uh, fence line. And there's no reason that that fence line can't develop easterly benefit all of our communities. And I think that's what we need to do is work collaboratively. And I believe the appetite from Mayor Island just uh, uh, kind of mentioned it lightly, but I believe the appetite is there with our current government to look at more future development for this area. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Zahar, do you have anything to add or will, should we move on to another question? No, I can just uh, reiterate what's okay. what's been said here. I think that you know, certainly COVID has um, slowed us down in some of the things that we've been hoping to accomplish over the last number of years. Uh, we had Doug Griffiths to do a presentation about building communities, which I thought was fantastic. And he had a lot of great ideas. And I think um, using resources like that and, and continuing uh, discussions, I think are, are vitally important. Um, as Mayor Glinski, I think, uh, pointed out, um, Promoting and marketing is one of the things that we can do as municipalities uh, to attract people here. Um, and every opportunity that I have, I try to talk about our bike parks and, and, and the uh, areas that we have here. Uh, we need to collaborate more with our snowmobile associations. We have some of the biggest ATV and snowmobile sales uh, in Alberta right here in the Yellow County area. Um, and that just speaks to the volume and the interest in, in these activities. Um, so I'm looking forward to our CAOs uh, collaborating and uh, uh, moving forward with some of these initiatives uh, moving forward. And our, our municipalities have been, uh, in Hinton in particular, and, and some of the other regional uh, municipalities like Rocky Mountain House, Drayton and Whitecourt, uh, we talk on a regular basis about uh, uh, working together and we're doing a, a municipal project right now. Uh, which I, I think the quote from Municipal Affairs was, this is going to be a game changer in 
municipal governance in Alberta. So um, those are the things that we need to do to strengthen our region and build tourism and build economic development uh, here in West Yellowhead. Thank you. I'm going to completely change topics again uh, and go to a question about um, energy transition. The Government of Canada is committed to achieving net zero emissions by 2050. Energy efficiency and building upgrades are profitable for businesses and steps can be taken by municipalities to promote affordable energy efficiency savings installations for homeowners. The PAYS program or the Property Assessed Clean Energy is an innovative financing tool that is available for consideration to encourage the installation of renewable energy systems and reduce energy consumptions. Are any of your municipalities working with the PAYS program for residents? Would anyone like to comment on that or even talk about energy transition in your municipality? What are things that the municipality is doing? I'll turn it over to Edson, please. Uh, thank you. Great question. Uh, one of our big focuses as part of council strategic plan is uh, uh, doing things in an environmentally friendly manner and uh, energy efficiency is a big piece to that. We uh, recently received a grant for a municipal intern who has been doing assessments in all municipal buildings to make them more energy efficient. Uh, we have partnered with uh, Jasper and uh, Hinton on and other uh, municipalities on uh, EV network of charging stations. That project continues and we're looking for grant funds uh, to really up north, uh, open up Northwestern Alberta uh, to the EV market. Right now, a lot of people who are driving electric vehicles uh, are not uh, coming out this way just due to lack of charging stations and the large distances between uh, having those uh, available. Uh, in Edson, we are having a, a big uh, Tesla supercharging area being put in. I believe that developments can be occurring this summer uh, by Boston Pizza, plus the stuff that uh, our regional municipalities are working on. Um, the EV market is uh, growing immensely, and uh, we need to start seizing on those opportunities, um, as well as, uh, you know, I talked about our municipal intern, who is our uh, energy coordinator. Um, he's going to be doing a lot of education on, um, he just released one, a uh, video on EVs and talking about things that, um, we can do as communities to be more energy efficient, uh, be green. Uh, we've, uh, we have a number of projects that we've undertaken. Um, I'm not going to go through the list. You can check it out on our website, edson.ca. Um, you know, uh, Mary Glinsky and I are, are working together, uh, on the Edson Regional Multiplex. And, um, you know, energy efficiency and being green is, uh, is a part of that discussion. I know that uh, councils in the past and Edson talked about solar farm in our community. Um, so those are the things that we're looking at and, and discussing in order to uh, reduce our emissions. Uh, we have an organics program as well here in Edson, which has really reduced uh, the amount of CO2 going up into the air and uh, uh, is another way that we are trying to address uh, some of the challenges that we are facing uh, from an environmental standpoint. Thank you. Mayor Glinsky. Yeah, thank you. And I think that was a very good question. I mean, we can't ignore the changing times and we can't ignore uh, that we, we have to all do something. You know, I look at our, our building, the building I'm in right now, uh, Yellowhead County Administration Building. It was built to the National Green Standard Codes to be as energy efficient as possible. And uh, last year we went to Evansburg in our triple park there in Evansburg and powered it by solar power. So we are looking at different ways of improving things, but I thought this might be also be an opportunity to uh, brag up Titan Farms, which is just located east of uh, Edson, and they are uh, developing a commercial composting uh, facility, and it's going to be a very large commercial composting facility, which is going to help all of us in our, uh, our waste disposal and stuff like that, but they are getting their national certification, I believe, this week. So there are a number of things happening within the county, and I think it's important that we keep pushing that forward. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Ireland? Thanks, Nancy. If I return to the original question, um, I have to acknowledge that I am not personally familiar with that particular program. I think you called it PAYS. So 
I will look into that. But generally speaking, there are some initiatives um, in Jasper moving forward and underway uh, with respect to energy con conservation and reduction of greenhouse gases and energy efficiency. One of those, um, Mayor uh, Zahara mentioned that the regional partnership with respect to electric vehicle charging stations, and we have a, a standalone independent um, project uh, about to unfold. We're anticipating perhaps even by um, early July, we will have um, a Tesla supercharging station in operation in Jasper. And there has now been another uh, provider who has joined that group. Um, I think the name is Zap, um, but there will be there will be two and a, a total, I think, of, of eight um, supercharging stations in Jasper, the downtown core. And uh, that will really address um, a couple of things, one of them being a uh, request from an increasing number of visitors who drive electric vehicles and find it challenging to make it as far as Jasper um, without uh, rapid chargers or level three chargers along the way. So um, we're certainly moving forward on that. Uh, at our most recent council meeting, we also directed administration um, to take advantage of a provincial grant um, through municipal affairs. And um, I, I will probably get the acronym wrong, but it's um, MADCC or something is it's part of the, the climate change uh, initiative in any event. And uh, there is grant funding available for um, a maximum of 80% of an individual's wage up to $80,000. Um, and through that program, we get professional assistance to develop um, a plan for the municipality to reduce its reliance on uh, both electrical and natural gas energy and, and thereby lower uh, greenhouse gases. So we've directed our administration to, to work um, within that program uh, so that we can get that expertise on the ground in Jasper to help us reduce our, our environmental impact. Uh, it's, it's a good program by, by all accounts and it will, it will have meaningful benefits long term. Uh, generally speaking, um, there are other initiatives that are available. I know we have uh, lots of residents putting solar panels on their own roofs um, to lower their own uh, footprint and their own costs as well. And we will do what we can to encourage all of those programs as they roll out. So the specific one, again, um, I will check the, the feed later um, and the chat line and get the, the right name for that and we'll look into it. Um, today, I don't know, but um, this is a listening exercise, as we said, so I listened to that and I will learn from it and go investigate. So thanks for that question. Thank you. Mayor Michaels, anything to add? Uh, thanks, Nancy. Not a ton, as Mayor Zahara alluded to, the EV program, uh, we're part of that. That's probably uh, the main thing. For PACE, uh, we in principle at Council approved uh, to move forward with that, but that has not come yet uh, to us for uh, final approval from administration is on our radar. Honestly, overall, we, we haven't done enough in this area and that's, it's just hasn't been uh, put at the priority to be honest. Uh, you have to pick and choose things. I'm not saying that's the right decision, but it's something that I think we have to better uh, prioritize in, in the future. So there's hasn't been a ton. I think there's a lot of opportunity uh, to come about, uh, but now with some, uh, some stable leadership for about the last eight, nine months here in Hinton, these are the things that we can, uh, you know, organize it and, and give the right attention because honestly, these things aren't uh, easy to uh, to really do. This is this is trend. This is about trending in the right direction, moving forward, and you need to really have your organization completely uh, structurally well in order to execute these things uh, well. So, uh, long story short. Uh, a lot of work to do uh, on this, even though we're doing some smaller stuff, uh, but the opportunity, we have to take advantage of that. Thank you. I wanna switch gears once again. We have a few questions in the feed about advocacy, I can't even say the words, about uh, municipal uh, governments and mayors being advocates for their community and lobbying. 
Um, and so I wonder if this is, we won't go into detail about what it is that you actually think you should do, but I, I think maybe it's an opportunity to uh, comment on the role of municipalities in speaking on behalf of their businesses. And so the two issues that came up was, one was uh, the, the fact that uh, particular sectors are the ones that have been repeatedly closed. Um, you know, when we look at hair at salons and health and wellness and those kinds of ones are the ones that tend to be shut down first. And, and the role of municipalities in, in advocating for that. And second of all, another issue that came up was big uh, players coming into the region, uh, doing big projects, and then uh, local companies not being um, selected for workers or to do the subcontracting. So uh, with those two examples in mind, I'm wondering if the mayors would like to talk about the role of, of being an advocate uh, for their communities and what it means as a municipality, what it is that you actually are, can do and cannot do, I think is probably the best way to start the conversation. And we'll start with Mayor Michaels. Thanks, Nancy. Uh, th this is a loaded question. Obviously, there's a lot of parts to this. The role of the municipality is to advocate um, uh, immensely for uh, every business in the community. Uh, there are certain things um, I, I don't really share, but there's, I guess, stuff that happens in the back. I am constantly uh, it, uh, working with West Fraser. It's our biggest uh, uh, employer. We have 700 people who work there. Uh, they are running well. And sometimes when, sometimes when something is, is, is doing okay or it's not in the, in the limelight, we kind of forget it, but it's important to maintain it. Imagine Hinton having an issue with their mill or it partially closing, that would be detrimental. So work with them is extremely important uh, for all sectors, not only the ones who are struggling. So uh, I bring that up that these are the examples in, in Jasper, Hinton and Yellowhead County, they'll have their examples too of where you lobby, but it's important uh, for Pine Beetle. It was a big issue for West Fraser, uh, I, I really believe our committee uh, with uh, members here at the table uh, played a, a massive role in getting ex uh, excess funding. Uh, uh, they added 5 million that one year for Pine Beetle. Uh, it really brought them, uh, I think the provincial government uh, on the radar to understand well, that there's a huge economic effect here that was being overlooked. Uh, most recently, ASO uh, is potentially going to have a huge impact uh, on mills. Now, directly for the Hinton uh, mill, maybe not, but this is a company that is throughout Alberta that may have issues in other areas, which will have a trickle down effect to West Fraser. These are the things, these are the conversations, the meetings that we're having often that people don't see, uh, it, and rightfully so, because uh, politics in it itself uh, is extremely boring, let alone the, the topics that uh, aren't emergent, right? So, uh, this is a great opportunity and I appreciate that question that uh, we have to continue working with our players. And on a smaller level, uh, I know you had brought up uh, the um, uh, restrictions. Uh, it is a, a huge role uh, to point out sometimes, I'll try to say this politely, um, things that do not make sense uh, from a business perspective. Uh, right away, I think all of us, all four mayors here are on the phone with our MLAs or our MPs saying, ah, Okay, this, this uh, the, the gym training was one uh, in, in having one-on-one -on -one trainer. You can have 20 people in the room, but you have to have 10, 10, gym, uh, 10 trainers and 10 individuals didn't make sense. Because if the risk for spreading COVID was, uh, um, you know, uh, having a lot of people in the room, you could have a lot of people, but you just need half the amount of trainers. It was illogical. It didn't make sense. That was changed probably four days later. They had a town hall meeting. They listened to, I think, all kinds of people, including mayors, saying, hey, come on, let's do the right thing. That's, that's the role of, uh, of a municipal official, I believe, is to make sure that all levels of government are talking to one another, but it's coming from the voice of businesses and residents. And that's the most important part, is we have to stay connected and hearing what you say in order for us to then make the phone call and work, work with our regional partners uh, to say, okay, we need changes or we need something better. So long-winded, but uh, I, I hope I got my message across. Thanks. Mayor Zahar. Thank you. Uh, excellent question. As Mayor Michael said, um, we do a lot of um, 
advocacy behind the scenes on the phone with her MLA, for example, who's been absolutely fantastic. Um, uh, and I think he doesn't get the credit uh, he deserves for the advocacy he does on our behalf a lot of the time uh, because he does that um, through the back channels of government. Um, and uh, but he's he's been absolutely tremendous to to work with and advocate on our behalf uh, for our community. We've been advocating for a regional approach and for transparency of data. We've been very vocal about that. Um, unfortunately, um, we haven't seen a lot of that occurring. Um, and, and I know that uh, other mayors right across this province have been talking about the same thing. You know, when, when, when businesses are shut down and you have zero cases in the community, that's a pretty bitter uh, pill to swallow. And even like right now, uh, we are above that threshold. Uh, but for the community of Edson, um, when they made that announcement, we were under the threshold as a local geographical area, but because we're bunched in with a larger county, which is two and a half hours from one side to the other, um, it, it has really not made a lot of sense to us. So we advocate uh, that way. Uh, we're working, um, as Mayor Michael said, uh, against uh, some changes that uh, ASO is trying to do that could have detrimental impacts to major employers in our region. Um, and uh, other other things that are happening in the community. So um, that's our role. And it's important that we hear from from businesses and uh, hearing their stories and hearing the information uh, where we can talk about how uh, gyms are losing 15 to $20,000 a month um, and that the grants available are, are not even coming close to covering the bills that they have. And how can we keep things open safely um, I think is really important. I think right now uh, we can talk about what's happened in the past, but right now what's really important for the next couple of weeks is people just following the rules and getting these vaccinations in arms. That will allow us to reopen. Um, and uh, if people are not going to follow the rules and have those social gatherings and the numbers continue to climb, this is only going to prolong the problem. If everybody kind of steps up and just really buckles down right now, um, I do believe that things will open up here in, in just a matter of weeks, I hope, um, and we can get back to normal. Uh, I think I have a, a really hard time with telling people that they can't earn a living and pay their bills uh, without providing the necessary supports. Um, and that's why we've introduced a loan program. And we're gonna be continuing to look at uh, different ways to assist businesses and hearing that feedback is very important for us as we develop programs moving forward. Mayor Glinsky. Well, I'd just like to uh, kind of follow the same theme that uh, Mayor Zahara was talking about. I think it's very important uh, as a mayor and a council that we have strong working relationships with our local MLA and our local MPs. I believe it's very important that as a mayor, that we have contacts with the particular ministers that uh, whether it's Minister of Transportation, Small Business, uh, uh, Environment. Uh, I know just 10 days ago, I had a long conversation with Jason Nixon uh, on the environment and uh, regarding camping fees and stuff like that. But I think that we need to be the eyes and ears of our senior governments, whether it's provincially or federally, and we hear on the ground what's happening and we have to take that information and pass it on to our MLAs and to make sure that they understand what's actually happening. And, and the same federally, it's just a matter of us providing that information. And I think it's very important. You know, over the last year with, with COVID, we've had well over a dozen meetings with different ministers, uh, uh, virtual meetings now, that's the way they are. In the past, we had them coming out to our communities and we used to encourage that, that we could promote it. But it's very important to keep that dialogue working between the, the county or the municipalities and their senior governments. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Ireland. Thanks, Nancy. I'll, I'll try and return to what I can recall of the original question. Um, certainly advocacy, particularly um, with other orders of government, it's not just an important role of municipalities, it's just about the only role we play. Um, although it, it may um, not come naturally to the attention of, of our residents, um, 
we are not a constitutionally recognized order of government. Uh, we are creatures of statute um, controlled by the provincial government. And so when we want to influence provincial responses, our only route is advocacy. We don't have legal tools to hold them to account. Um, our residents can hold them to account um, through the electoral system. We are required as municipalities to engage in advocacy and that's what we do. Advocacy um, got jazz for local government, um, years of advocacy at the at federal level. So we understand that that's our role. Um, advocacy recently resulted in an allotment of what's called most money here in Jasper that is instrumental in our recovery efforts. Um, and we recognize the role of advocacy, not just our advocacy to provincial government, but advocacy of our MLA within that government. So absolutely, um, advocacy is critical to our role. But uh, Mayor Zahara made, a, a, I think, a really good point um, that I'd like to expand on. And part of that advocacy is advocacy back to our community. Um, Mayor Glinsky started off uh, reiterating the importance of vaccinations. That's our role too. We have to advocate to our community the importance of getting on board with vaccines. As uh, Mayor Zahara said, uh, we have to advocate that Sticking to the rules is critical right now. We don't want this prolonged any longer. We want our businesses back in operation. To get there, we have to advocate amongst our community members um, to follow the rules and the regulations. And yes, I, I understand that um, there are frustrations um, often based on the ambiguity of the regulations. And as uh, Mayor Michaels was pointing out, um, Sometimes advocacy is really effective and you get a rewrite right away, sometimes not so much. Um, but regardless, we can advocate, but at the same time, tell our residents and our, our business sector that the rules are there for the generalized welfare of our communities and that is our statutory duty. Um, so I draw a distinction between advocacy on behalf of the community, advocacy on behalf of an industry and advocacy on behalf of an individual business. Um, there is a line that, that we cannot cross because under the Municipal Government Act, and again, we are creatures of the statute, we have a statutory obligation as elected municipal leaders to work in the best interests of the community as a whole. That's what the act says. So we can't pick and choose and fight for a particular business outside of that realm. There are times, of course, when, when the interests of a, of a business coincide with the general community interest. And of course, then it's, it's perfectly fine to do that. But as advocates of the community and advocates of our industries, absolutely, that is our probably our most critical role. Um, so I, I, I do appreciate the, the question and I hope that answer is not too nuanced, but there, there is a degree of, of uh, separation that has to be made at some points between um, the generalized role of advocacy and whether we can advocate for a particular business in a particular situation. Nancy, can I add something? Of course. Um, I, I wanted to communicate to people who are, who are listening to this. I wanna express what I, what I believe our municipalities are doing and what we, we need to do even better. But we use the word advocacy, and I think this is a fundamental issue with all levels of government. I'm not going to pit, uh, pick on uh, any government in place at the moment, but the problem is we advocate on actions already taken. That is the issue on every level of government, that decisions are being made without soliciting our residents, our businesses. It is important for government to solicit and, and find out what we want, what they want, and that's not happening. And it's then an uphill battle to advocate for change. If you solicit, if you go to the people and you find out what they want prior to stuff, it makes it a lot different. That is the philosophical issue, I believe, in government in 2021, that we are not going out to our people. And and and, and that is that's on us too as a municipality. It's our job to go and, and, and solicit uh, uh, that information. Because let's be honest, nobody follows politics anymore. Um, and and like, I, we have eight, 10 people who, who, who go watch our, our meeting and we make decisions 
based on, well, we're not getting feedback. Well, yeah, people don't give feedback. You have to go out and solicit that feedback. Uh, the camping uh, example from the provincial government. Um, well, we're gonna advocate. People have been advocating and, and talking, but let's solicit first. Before we make any decision and we pivot and we wanna philosophically change something, let's get that pulse, let's get that input from people and then build the program. And I, and I assure that all four mayors here are doing that and pushing every level of government to make sure that let's have those conversations prior to decision-making. Because we, we, we all believe to some extent, certain things are just rubber stamped after. They're like, oh yeah, give us our feedback. But is the feedback really listened? I don't know. Uh, I feel sometimes that it's not. That's the problem. If, if, these, if these programs were created prior, after, sorry, getting information would be a way different story. So a bit of a rant, but this is an issue from coast to coast in our country that politicians are not going out to people and getting info and, 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 and being available to them. Uh, and that fundamentally has to change. So um, that's all I have, Nancy. Thanks for letting me uh, speak a second time on that. Thank you. Well, our questions seem to have ended in the chat. Um, and so I guess we'll pretty soon turn it back to you, Louise. Um, so I'm gonna give everybody an opportunity to give you one minute if you have one last questions. And Nancy, uh, James had a, a question about incorporating environment, social and governance into investment readiness plans. I'm wondering if any of the mayors wanted to speak to that question and I see somebody else okay. is typing right now too. The question was, how important do you think ESG environment, social and governments considerations are to business and investment attraction? Are you incorporating ESG into your investment readiness plans? So I'm not sure I know that Jasper would not have an investment readiness plan. I think that um, given the nature of starting a business in Jasper, but does any of the municipalities have investment readiness plans or would like to speak to that? I'm gonna take that as a question that maybe we should move on. Okay. Um, and, oh, go ahead, Mayor Zahara. Well, I think it's important that we provide some sort of response. Um, I honestly know we don't have an investment readiness plan. I'm not quite sure um, what that is, um, to be honest with you. Um, mm -hmm. what, what we are doing uh, from a municipal standpoint in our community, um, and it has been a really cha big challenge for us. Uh, and if there's any ads and businesses that are, are online, we, I've talked about this at Chamber of Commerce events is, um, we have events challenges within our planning and development to, to really bring it to the next level. Uh, we've had some staffing turnovers and that sort of thing. And we have some really old policy, um, which is sometimes contradictory. So uh, the big thing that we're doing as a municipality is trying to fine tune that, as I mentioned earlier, um, and trying to reduce red tape and, uh, and help businesses develop. I do know we have a lot of uh, positive things in the queue moving forward and uh, hopefully those things will uh, support some developments in our community um, and uh, and I think that's really the role of the municipality is is to reduce that red tape and make it easy for business to do business and I think as Mayor Michael said step out of the way and let business do what they do best. Well I can tell you from our perspective that entrepreneurship is alive and well in the West Yellowhead. We talk to people almost every day about starting up. So people are still starting up despite the uh, economic con uh, conditions. So um, before we close, uh, now we're, we just have comments uh, towards some of the comments that the mayor's made. Um, would anyone like to have final words before we hand it off to Mayor Ireland, who was nominated to wrap it up for the mayors today? Any final comments? Mayor Zahara? Um, I think this would be a good opportunity, if you don't mind, Nancy, is to talk about uh, the Choose West Yellowhead initiative. Um, mm -hmm. So in, in Edson, uh, we did a business walk. I think they've done it in the other communities. It was really great to engage with business owners uh, and, and to hear this was, I don't know, a few months into the pandemic, Nancy. Mm -hmm. um, we never thought we'd be here 13 or 14 months later. Um, 
but one of the key things that we heard from our businesses here in Edson, uh, which was interesting, is support with marketing efforts and, and promoting shop local. Um, throughout the pandemic, I've heard from uh, quite a few business owners, actually, that uh, business has been actually really uh, positive because people aren't traveling outside of the region mm-hmm. to, to do their shopping. Um, and it has given an opportunity for people to explore what's available locally. And I know a lot of our businesses pivoted to sidewalk sales and, and restaurants with patios, for example. Uh, but the big thing was marketing and promoting uh, uh, businesses and shopping locally. So Nancy, do you want to speak about the Choose, Choose West Yellowhead I would initiative? would love to. I love a great segue where I can brag about my team. So our team here at the West Yellowhead Office of Community Futures, we are launching our Choose West Yellowhead campaign. It's a year-long campaign for us to talk about why we choose the West Yellowhead to live, shop, recreate, start a business, uh, be safe. And you've already probably seen last week we did uh, with our health and safety business advisor, we took over social media and had a week-long Caught You Being Safe campaign and featured a business in each of our communities that is actually got caught being safe. We have some exciting things coming up. We're about to launch in June. We're looking at a book walk, working with our, working with our libraries so we can feature some local authors who are also entrepreneurs in their own way. And we have many things planned over the next year that we can talk to people about why you should choose the West Shallow Head. So we're we're going to be working with businesses. We'll be featuring businesses in our five communities. We'll be uh, reaching out to people. If you would like to contact our team, I see Heather, my trusty Edson sidekick, uh, has already posted. Just use the hashtag Choose West Shallowhead. If you'd like to more, contact our team. We'll tell you all about it. And we are already having businesses reach out to us that would like to be engaged. So in the next month, we're also going to be doing kits for businesses so that they can feature their business on a Choose by Shallowhead campaign. You'll have a little decal for your window and a kit on how you can work with us to market us because we want people to enjoy the West Shallowhead. As Mayor Glinsky talked about earlier in the county, there's so many things in the West Shallowhead for us to do. And as someone that is relearning and re-exploring Jasper National Park right now over the last 18 months, it is great. Uh, so I really encourage you to reach out for, with us and we'll be working with our municipalities and our chambers because our chambers also have some shop local campaigns we want to highlight and you'll hear from us soon. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I really enjoyed being the moderator today. I always love working with these four mayors. They are very passionate about their communities and they really love the West Shallowhead. And I'm going to hand it over to Mayor Ireland who is going to close on behalf of the mayors today and then we'll hand it over to Louise. Thanks, Nancy. Um, But I'm not in fact going to close, but I'm going to start to close. Um, and I, I think it's appropriate um, in this circumstance. I, I did say that uh, with the other mayors when we had a pre-meeting that, that I would do this and the closing in that regard will, will be short. Um, as has been said numerous times, um, we are here to listen. Uh, Mayor Michaels has, has made a point of, of the importance of engaging um, from us to our residents rather than just sit back and and wait for them to come. So this was an opportunity to get out in front of our our residents, particularly our business sector um, and listen to them. And we will continue to do that. Uh, There has been discussion today, which is uh, a commitment of of all of us, uh, at least to the extent that um, we are back again after October and who can say for sure. but the intent is that that this sort of forum will continue uh, beyond COVID and, and beyond the recovery. We, we all recognize the need for um, a continued regional approach. And this is one way that we can demonstrate that. So we're very happy to do that. Uh, so stay tuned. I'm not sure what it is going to look like. Uh, we are in such a state of flux. We are all uh, very optimistic that things are going to uh, relaunch in a, in a really sustained way fairly shortly. That's going to keep everybody really busy, um, both at the, the municipal level, but at the, the business level 
people more importantly. So when we can return to this forum is, is uncertain, but the, the commitment, the willingness of the regional mayors is certainly there. And I think it's now embedded um, at the administrative level as well. So it doesn't have to be just mayors and it won't be just mayors. It'll be our CAOs and administrative teams dealing with each other as well and maintaining um, the really wonderful partnership um, that we've developed with uh, with you, Nancy, and uh, Community Futures West Yellowhead through this process and you, Gail, and the, the regional support network, uh, the business support network. Those sorts of dynamics will continue as well, and we're happy to be part of that. However, what I want to do is uh, invite the other mayors um, to show us their homework because we had been invited um, to prepare a response to the question, what's working well in your community? And I know that um, each of the other mayors slaved over that um, and they're really anxious to deliver um, an answer to that question, what's working well in your community? Um, so thank you, Nancy, for asking that question and I will begin. Um, and I will tell you that um, it's really wonderful to have that question to respond because it provides an opportunity, um, certainly in my case, to give a shout out to our entire community. What um, is working exceptionally well in Jasper is the collective response of the entire community. In some cases, we have seen specific examples of, of really designed, coordinated, collaborative efforts, that is businesses working together consciously um, to support each other, businesses supporting residents, residents supporting businesses and each other. Um, and that's, that's all been um, a wonderful sight to see unfold. But beyond that, and in a, in a much more broad and general sense, we have seen here this really strong collective alignment to the desired outcomes, and that is, let's get our community through this pandemic. Um, it has not been a case of each person for themselves. It has been a collective response, and it is credit to our residents. It's credited. It's a credit to our business sector, and it's also a credit to our visitors. Um, we have recognized here the importance of safeguarding our brand. Um, we are, as I said earlier, um, a destination. We rely on visitors. We have to provide a safe product. And our, our community understands that and our visitors respect that. And so we brought in, for example, a, a masking bylaw that goes further than most communities. But our circumstances are different. And for the most part, and I, don't, I, I do acknowledge that there are some exceptions to this, but by far the majority of people respect that approach. And we have had a relatively successful winter season. Um, we have again underscored the importance of uh, the tourism industry to the entire community. So Margaret Basin was open. We had thousands of visitors weekly. Um, and I can tell you that um, there was concern and I shared some of that concern about where that might lead. But we managed, and we managed because they followed the rules, and they continue to follow the rules, and they're getting vaccinated. And I take up uh, Mayor Zahara's challenge, and Jasper's going to crush it. Um, we are going to get our residents vaccinated because they are so anxious to do this. We've instituted a, a rapid testing protocol. Protocol. We have 21 businesses who are lined up. Um, there's, I think, 450 employees who will get a rapid test um, through the Chamber of Commerce once a week from now until September, because we have to establish our and maintain our reputation as a safe destination for visitors. So that's what's working well in our community. Um, we are collectively committed to a positive outcome and we are fighting the virus, not each other and not regulations. We're getting on with the task at hand, safeguarding our community, protecting our future. And I, I tell you, it is one of the most rewarding um, experiences of my now quite long career in politics, um, but it has been a, a highlight uh, to see our community response. So again, Nancy, thank you for that wonderful question. And uh, I will turn it to uh, the other mayors to, to close with telling us what's working well in their communities. 
Seeing uh, Mayor Ireland has taken over as moderator, I will uh, take back the, the conch and uh, hand it over to Mayor Zahara, who just raised his hand. Uh, thanks for that. And thanks for putting us on the spot, Mayor Ireland. I won't uh, forget that. And uh, I think you're strongly mistaken. Uh, we're going to crush it here in Edson and uh, leave uh, Hinton and Jasper in the dust in, in Yellowhead County. Um, so I think that one of the, the great things that I've seen happen in our community is people really trying to rally around each other and support one another despite all the negativity out there and, and trying to lift spirits. And, and I'm going to give the specific example. Um, after the, during the second wave, uh, after the second wave, Panago Pizza went and delivered uh, a bunch of uh, pizzas to uh, a place where I work um, to kind of spread some cheer and, and to say thank you and, and to, um, you know, trying to, to put a positive outlook on things. Um, we went and we went and bought some pizzas for other businesses in the community. We delivered to a couple hair salons in town who have been adversely affected. So now we have restaurants and um, hair salons that uh, who have been adversely affected and uh, but they're now getting support and that just spiraled because it spread throughout the community like wildfire and people and businesses were posting where they were delivering their pizzas to um, and different eateries uh, were supported uh, during this uh, I think almost most uh, I won't say all but most uh, hair salons and a lot of our retail shops uh, received uh, food and it was like a thing that happened every Friday and it just spread cheer and so many people were impacted by this. And uh, I, I was really heartened to see that because despite the challenges and the hardships these businesses are facing and, and people are facing, uh, we all were rallying and trying to, to make people feel good and, and give a positive outlook. Uh, our local Sobeys has been delivering um, different uh, pastries and donuts uh, to businesses to spread cheer and the support for healthcare workers and things like that. So despite all the negativity and all the challenges uh, and impacts on our business community, there were some very positive things that I seen come out of this. And as uh, Mayor Ireland spoke about, um, businesses collaborate, uh, collaborating. So we have a bar here in town that had to move outdoor uh, patio. They didn't have food. So they partnered with a restaurant just on the other street who would bring food um, so people could have a meal and have a beer and, and enjoy the outdoor patio space. So those are the things um, that I've been very heartened to see despite um, some of the other things that we've been experiencing uh, in society over the last uh, 13 months. And I think also the regional collaboration and working with other levels of government, I think has really uh, strengthened our resolve on working together for our communities as a whole. Mayor Michaels or Mayor Glinski? Uh, thanks, Nancy. Um, not a lot to add. I really, really like uh, the word collective that Mayor Ireland said. Um, so in order not to repeat, I think, what both of those mayors uh, spoke to, um, I think there's a lot of work to be done. Even though the things are working in the community or, or in our communities to some extent, there's a silver lining through COVID. It has been a uh, the world today is so polarized. It's difficult to have conversations because uh, we are forming um, a stereotype uh, the moment the conversation starts. You're either left wing or you're right wing. You're either um, pro vaccination or anti vaccination. You're and and it has really challenged our community and our all communities uh, throughout the world. But specifically, I'll, I'll focus on Alberta to be able to have these conversations and change the narrative to understand that. We're all on the same side that no topic, no government, no issue should divide us. So for me, uh, I know I'm kind of veering this away of what's working. Um, what's, what's working is um, accessibility, conversations, um, um, government that is there to have tough conversations with people. Uh, and you only have that if you have that two-way communication. And it's creating that new medium and it's changing uh, the fundamentals of politics and it's extremely important. So, um, like I said, of course, collaboration, um, you know, working together is, 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 is some of the strengths that are 
are really showing right now. But uh, ultimately, I'm, I'm, I really want every resident, every person to understand that you don't have to pigeonhole yourself into a category. It's important to have that dialogue and work together because at the end of the day, when COVID or whatever the matter of the day is, we are left together with it, right? It's, it's simplistic to look at it that way, but it's the reality of what we live in. So to me, uh, we need to learn to continue to have better, tough conversations, and that's okay, uh, even if it, they're polarizing. So I've seen some progress, we're far away, but we're moving in the right direction. And that gives me optimism um, you know, for uh, the, the next generation to hopefully really get it perfect but I, I believe we're doing our part right now. And I thank everyone for, um, for, for doing their part, whether it's on social media or other mediums uh, to have these conversations. Uh, thanks, Nancy. Uh, and, and thanks, Louise. Really, I, I wanna take a second, really thank Louise uh, for pushing this and making this an annual event. Um, you're awesome, Nancy, you're, you're awesome. You know that. Um, and really appreciate all you guys. Thanks so much. Hey, bef yeah. before we get, sorry, uh, Nancy, before we get to Mary Glinsky, Marcel is avoiding the question about the vaccination challenge. Well, uh, we didn't, we didn't let Richard know that it's the most people vaccinated. It's not percentage. So he's not going to win because they're, they're only 4,000 people, right? So, so he doesn't know he can't win this. So really it's a race between us three, uh, which I think Hinton will probably win, you know, we're, yeah. So there, there's your answer. So sorry, Richard. Uh, Nothing wrong with fourth place. It's okay. No one wins second. Mayor Glinski, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you. And thank you to my three colleagues here for uh, being here this morning. And, and a special thanks to you, Louise and Nancy. And Nancy, as usual, you always do a great job moderating. <laughs> and thank you for the work that you do throughout the region for small businesses. You know, uh, in the last month, I've really seen a change in the attitude of people. They're, they're becoming more positive. I mean, we go back six weeks or eight weeks, I think we were all angry with COVID. We just, we had enough of it. I didn't want to watch TV and see the same stuff being brought back up. But I think since the vaccinations have started in earnest and the numbers have been increasing, I think it's been a good thing for uh, Yellowhead County, for Edson, Hinton, and Jasper, because people, as one of the mayors mentioned, oh, it was you, uh, Kevin, that we're seeing the end of the tunnel. And as Dr. Uh, uh, Henshaw said yesterday, this is, this is the answer. It's not gonna completely wipe it out, but it is the answer. And, and even though we were probably one of the few communities that couldn't get a uh, mask by law in because we had some residents that were against it, but we respect their uh, opinions and we respect the opinions of the people that wanted it. And, but we've all gotten along. There has not been any harsh feelings since that. But but it's the whole area getting together and working. And I think we've all spoken about that. And, and I just wanted to say something that uh, Mayor uh, Michaels mentioned, you know, about going out and going back to the community and asking questions. We recently, with our staff, been working on our land use uh, bylaw. And we did three different phases of surveys to the public. And, you know, we got over 500 people come back and give us input on what they thought we should do as a county to improve home business proposals and, uh, you know, things like gravel pits and stuff like that. So getting involved with your community and asking those questions are so vital and so important. And thank you for bringing that up, Michael, uh, because we got tremendous feedback. And as a result of that, we've been able to modernize our uh, lab use uh, bylaws. But uh, overall, I, I, I think it's just the most positive thing I can really say about Yellowhead County right now. I mean, economically we're doing good, but I think the attitude of the people are becoming more excited about getting together and having a good summer. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks again to all four of you. And I would like to do a shout out to my team who have worked so hard over the past 14 months and I wouldn't be able to do this job without them. And so uh, on that note, I will hand it over to, oh, Mayor Ireland. I'm just going to ask um, in, in the uh, advocacy discussion, it, it's clear that my advocacy efforts um, to the other mayors to 
make some sense of the rules for the co or the vaccine challenge are, are going to fall on deaf ears. So I'm going to advocate to you, Nancy, as the voice of reason, to come up with some rules that will allow Jasper to legitimately win this challenge. Okay. I, okay. You, you I... are yeah, a moderator extraordinaire, and you can okay. come up with a fair plan, and they will all pay attention. So, so how you. about we, as a Gen Xer who lined up right away to get her shot, like a good Gen Xer does, listen to authority, uh, I will suggest that we have a, a, a set date and it's a percentage of the residents that are, uh, yeah, sorry, Mayor Michaels, a percentage of the residents that are vaccinated and force the other three mayors to go around in their municipalities wearing the uh, swag of the winning municipality for the day. Um, so what would you like your set date to be? Let's pick July 31st. Uh, August 30, August 30th. What would you like? September 1st. How about that? I think July 31st, the latest. Though. July 31st, or would you like it sooner? Would you like it sooner? Uh, um, Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. Maybe July fifteenth, someplace. A okay, sooner. let's go with July fifteenth. And uh, as we all like to choose by Shallowhead, I will on July fifteenth do my best to try to figure out the percentages of each. And Louise will help me declare a winner. And I, I do expect all four mayors to then wear the swag and brag about the winning community um, on that date. So on that note, I, I also want to say thank you to Louise, who works so tirelessly behind the scenes uh, as our business liaison in this region and sometimes does not get the credit that she deserves. So I will hand it back to her and say a big thank you for her work. And uh, thank you for today. I really enjoyed myself and learned a few new things. So thank you. I'll see you on July 15th. Thank you all, and uh, thanks to all of our, our participants out there, um, and for those who would view um, at some later time uh, based on their own schedules. Thank you all very much. And I will also echo that as well. Thank you to all of you for participating. I think is is such a great opportunity for people to hear from their mayors, feel a more personal connection to them, and possibly reach out with feedback and uh, and feel comfortable with those dialogues. So thank you for that. I would like to share that our next regional business support network meeting is going to be on Thursday, June 10th. And one of the things we're gonna do at that meeting is have some breakout sessions to talk about what do you see in the community that, um, is working well now. What about a year from now? What would you like to see happening in your community? And in 2025, what do we see as a potential for our community? So it's gonna be a really great, fun planning uh, session we're gonna have. And uh, we also wanna end, we don't meet in July and August. So we want to end this year um, on a really positive fun note. So I hope you will join us for that. And with that, Nancy, I'd like to give opportunity for those who have tuned in, if anyone would like to share in a round table, if you've got any information, anything that you would like to um, be able to just talk to all of us, let us know what's coming up for your business. Um, at this time, just raise your hand. If you scroll down to the bottom of your screen, there's a little raise hand and you can just click on that. If there is anything that you would like to share, we'll give you a minute to do that. Don't be shy. We're a really nice group of people here. I think Natalie has raised her hand from the Hinton Chamber, Louise. Perfect. It's not showing on my side. Thank you, Nancy. If you could just handle that, that would be great. Oh, there we go. 
Okay, I think I have on muted. Can you hear me, Louise? Yes, we sure can. Okay, I just, um, good afternoon, or I guess it's good morning still um, to everyone on the line. And thank you to the mayors um, in the region. It was very informative and it's always great to learn what's going on. Um, I wanted to take the opportunity just to talk to, hopefully there's some businesses on the line. Um, and if they haven't learned of our shop local program, the Hinton First Bucks, we are um, in the thick of getting the campaign off the ground. We've had over 35 plus businesses get involved to date and we've pre-sold um, probably well over $50,000 worth of money that's going to go back into the community. So it's great. And I challenge any businesses out there to take a look at taking this program on as possibly long-term service awards, um, safety awards, or, you know, if you haven't had the opportunity to maybe reward your staff with a meal out or something, it's great to purchase um, maybe some hint and first dollars and, uh, allow that staff member to go out and inject it back into the community. This is a, a great program to try to keep our dollars in Hinton. Um, also, just to let everybody know, we are going to be opening the Explore Hinton Visitor Center. Um, the date will be June 16th for the season, and we're anticipating um, to, again, have visitors only from Alberta this year, but um, we're looking forward to getting them outside. It's um, It's been a little bit tough for the messaging right now because we really don't want to encourage people to travel, but we do know that there's a lot of things that people can still do that's quite safely outside. Um, and just a reminder to everybody to uh, take a look at our explorehinton.org site. We've got a lot of great information that's going on there daily. And um, I think it's gonna be um, a great summer, um, especially since Hinton's gonna have so many people vaccinated. So thanks everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice plug there, Natalie. <laughs> well done. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for that. Anyone else want to share before we sign off today? Okay. Well, I thank you all so much and encourage you to provide feedback, have those discussions with your mayors. They are most interested in hearing from you. And with that, we will uh, close the meeting. I also want to give a huge plug to Steve Betchy, who's just incredible with supporting us when we do these events. Having someone who understands technology and supports me, I'm able to sleep the night before we do this. So a big thank you to Steve. Thank you to the town of Edson for um, providing our Zoom this morning and to everyone. Um, have a great day.